cultures go through cycles, and we are in a very deep cycle of decadence and corruption mixed with nuclear weapons, bioweapons, high-tech surveillance, television brainwashing. We're all living an experiment here. And uh, as we went to break, uh, Alfred Adask was making the point that his maxim is it is American to not trust your government. Well, that is as American as apple pie, but that's alien to some new listeners. That shows how domesticated many of us have become. Uh, Alfred, uh, please continue uh, repeating what you said. You have the floor. You look at, I mean, the genius of the American Constitution, and there's things to complain about it and maybe some flaws, but as originally drafted, the genius is that it's an anti-government document. The reason we have separation of powers is so the three branches of governments fight amongst each other and don't fight with us. The reason we have the right to keep and bear arms is to protect us against the government. The reason for freedom of speech and freedom of the press is not so we can read gossip about what they're doing on the new housewives of New York or some damn thing. It's about telling people what someone saw in the government. Somebody saw something, the government's doing something wrong. Talk about it. It's intended, every bit of that. The reason we have elections every two years. If we really trusted the government, why don't we just elect these guys one time and they stay there until they die? It's because we give them two years at the max, at least at Congress. And you better watch your step or we'll throw you out. Every bit of that Congress, every bit of, excuse me, every bit of the Constitution was designed to protect us from government. They recognized it's a necessary evil, but they did not trust the government. Let me read a section here from the, there's a preamble to the uh to the, to the Bill of Rights. And it explains the purpose of the Bill of Rights. And you can look this up on the internet. It's not usually published, but you can find it. You can go to the internet and just enter preamble to the Bill of Rights, and you'll get this. And it's only, I don't know, 50, 100 words, something like that. It says resolved by the Senate. It says the conventions of a number of states having at the time they're adopting a constitution expressed a desire in order to prevent misconstruction abuse of its powers, meaning the powers of the constitution, that further restrictive and uh, clau declaratory and restrictive clauses should be added. Those declaratory and restrictive clauses are the first ten amendments. Their purpose is to prevent abuse of the Constitution. Who could abuse the Constitution except federal officers, officials, and employees? The only people who can abuse the powers of the Constitution are the people who have them to exercise. And that tells us that the purpose of the first ten amendments was to protect the people of the states against the federal government. They didn't trust the government as far as they could throw it. They said, we got to have one, but we don't trust the SOBs. And what's the reason for the second amendment? To protect us against the federal government. It says so by implication right there in the preamble to the, to the, uh, uh, the, pre the, pre the preamble to the Bill of Rights. And it's what I tried to talk about on that 60 Minutes interview, and they brought me in because I said, oh, the purpose of the, cons the Second Amendment is to shoot people in, in, in the government. And I said, yeah, and here's why. But it's not intended to be a license just to go out and start shooting cops and judges and whatever. It's, it is the means of protecting yourself from despotism. If and when the government becomes despotic and tyrannical, it's like it says in the Declaration of Independence, it's your right, it's your duty to throw off that government. The Second Amendment is the means to throw off that government. If the government becomes despotic, Second Amendment kicks in. It doesn't mean you go shoot every cop you can find. That's never been my point. But the point is, if they are despotic, Second Amendment. And like it or not, I was sent the internal FEMA footage from Kansas City in 2000, where FEMA gets up in front of cops and firemen and teaches them the Founding Fathers were terrorists, the Bill of Rights, Declaration of Independence is is an evil document. They are openly uh, saying uh, in some of these federal documents we've gotten that those that make frequent references to the U.S. Constitution, well, the cops have sworn an oath to that, and now we have the Indiana Supreme Court. I don't know if you saw that ruling, but the, the, the lead judge said cops can come in for any reason or no reason at all. There is no Fourth Amendment. This is open despotism. This is open evil, uh, and the police more and more are caught just pulling people over, stealing cash out of their wallets. You heard me run through that raft earlier, and now on the TSA website, blogger Bob, the official voice of them, 
uh, says that Texas, it doesn't matter what you say, we have Article uh, 6, Clause 2, prevent states from uh, regulating the federal government. I mean, that is on its head, claiming that the Commerce Clause, the Supremacy Clause, uh, gives them all this power only in the issuance of currency, only in the Navy, and only in protecting the borders. Uh, I mean, why even have states if they're so busy? I mean, look at till, till 1913, the state legislatures voted and picked the U.S. senators. That shows the power of the states. They ran the Senate. They ran right. the veto. And, right. and now they're telling us states have no power. We will stick our hands down your pants, and we don't care if the state of Texas unanimously votes, unanimously uh, in one of the houses to say, don't stick your hands down people's pants. Well, that's already illegal. And, 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 and the feds laugh and giggle on a blog about it. Well... There's reason to believe that what passes for state government right now may not be state government. Yeah, 19, it may 1933 be a territorial government. Yeah. It may be a territorial government, and under Article 4, Section 3, Clause 2 of the federal constitution, the Congress has exclusive legislative jurisdiction over the territories. I strongly suspect, I can't prove it, but I strongly suspect that what passes for Texas today in the they presume it to be a territory rather than the State of the Union. Part of the reason for that, Article 1, Section 10, Clause 1, it says in part, no state shall make anything but gold and silver coin a tender in payment of debts. Now, how does the government of the state of Texas function without gold and silver? The Constitution has never been amended to eliminate that clause. And it doesn't apply to territories and it doesn't apply to federal government. It's a government. territorial it script. It yeah, that's right. And they have, by taking the gold and silver out of circulation, I think what they've done is they've rendered the de jure government of the State of the Union, I think they've rendered them insolvent and unfunctional. Well, no, what you said is true. They replaced them with some sort of a territorial setup. No, they created the state police in 33 under federal auspices. They went and financed it. Uh, basically as part of the federal receivership, and they took territorial law that had already been perfected out west and exported it as the federal model. It's not just your theory. I've read in the federal rulings where they talk about force majeure, force de jure, admiralty law. This is how they're operating. It's how the cops seize cash out of your wallet when no drugs or no arrest is made. They're, they're operating under the, the uh, federal uh, mandates uh, as state police as part of their agreements with the feds to get 80% receivership back uh, of the money if they go through the feds and not the state. Now, they're, they're operating under admiralty. Yeah, the world we'll continue. is continue. Well, it, it, let me give you here's here is a cause dear to my heart. I was sued by the Attorney General of the State of Texas for twenty five thousand dollars a day. That's nine million dollars a year for uh, the manufacture and distribution of a controlled substance. It's not cocaine or methamphetamine or any of that. I was I was fiduciary for a trust that leased some equipment, just tables and chairs, to a corporation that was manufacturing colloidal silver. All right? They brought me in as, a, in a, as the last of seven defendants. The case started in 2001, lasted until 2007. I was the last one added. First three defendants hired attorneys. They paid him, they paid him $160,000 for defense. All they did is drive them into bankruptcy. First three defendants went into bankruptcy. Two of them, husband and wife, divorced, split, they're gone. I got involved in this and read the relevant drug laws because that's what we're charged under. And under the Texas Health and Safety Code, Section 431.002, subparagraph 14, it says drug means, articles recognized in the official United States Pharmacopoeia, yada, 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 articles intended or designed for use in the diagnosis, cure, mitigation, treatment, or prevention of disease in man or other animals. And the first time I saw man or other animals, I thought, <laughs> why the damn fools? I don't even know what they're writing. The phrase means they presume man to be an animal. No, that, no, that's, that, that's an inside joke by them. But l l let me expand on that. They put last year in the Food Safety Act, written by Big Pharma, they gave $17 million in just a one-week period, uh, written by Big Pharma and Big Agribusiness to shut down local farms and ranches. Codex Alimentarius, yeah. uh, that that entire European Union, EU Act, uh, would be implemented, and luckily it's been defeated so far. But Europe has now implemented, and you can pull up the headlines, hundreds of herbal remedies, vitamins banned from over-the-counter sale. 
And so, yes, they are saying that under this, uh, they've had SWAT teams raid uh, aloe vera farms. Because That's they're exactly right. I, I mean, th these people are mafia. It's very simple. We found it in 23 separate laws at the state and federal level that applied directly to our case. I realize the significance. You can't declare me to be an animal because my Bible says at Genesis 1, 26 through 28, on the sixth day, God created man in his image and gave man dominion over the animals. As a Christian or a Jew and probably even as a Muslim, the government can't declare us to be animals without violating our freedom of religion. I made a religious freedom defense. I created a religious freedom defense to this case that the assistant, the attorney general had spent almost half a million dollars on in six years. And I drafted a religious freedom defense to this. And I said, you can't call me an animal. Your law doesn't apply to me. And they dropped the case. Let me stop you. Feds win 98 percent of the time now because they have special kept juries. How did Alfred Adask uh, defeat these demons? Well, we advance because here's the point. This law, this definition that defines man to be an animal, and the drug law, it's also found in the, medical, in the definition of medical devices. It means, just thinking about drugs, the war on drugs is based on the presumption that the people are animals. The war on drugs gave rise, started by Nixon in 1971, gave rise to most of the modern police state. And what do they say in The Godfather, which is a, a globalist love it because everything's a message. The mafia is sitting around and they go, we're going to start bringing narcotics in. Don Carleone hadn't let us do this. And Don Carleone says, I'll lose all my judges and police. They'll, they'll deal with hookers and alcohol because they like that. But they don't like heroin and cocaine. Yeah. And the mob boss says... Only have it in the colored areas. They're animals. Let them lose their souls. And when you get into globalist doctrine, they believe we're all animals and dumb. That's exactly right. It's social Darwinism. We deserve this. So they're saying, and you mentioned this is in federal states. I've seen it as well. Read it again. We are animals, they're saying. Man or other animals. We found 23 separate instances that applied to our case laws at both the Texas level and federal level. We found it in five other states where we looked. I presume it to be true in all 50 states, or at least the vast majority of them. Last night, I got an email from someone in Australia who's been visiting the website, and he's seen the articles I have on man or other animals, and he's looked at the Australian law. The Australian drug law also defines the people to be animals, which tells me that this business of Presuming the people to be animals is not confined to the United States. No, 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 it's it not. Goes, it's a it's legal well, fiction that they've created that they then run everything through. Then we, through contract fraud, si explain that to people. We sign on. We now agree as indentured servants. A lot of my family came here as slaves, white slaves. They were indentured servants, seven-year, 14-year uh, deals, whatever they signed on to. You come here, and then th they make you buy everything through the contract from the company store, uh, they have a strong man that keeps you under their control. You never basically get off the plantation. In fact, many historians broke down that white slaves or indentured servants were worse off than blacks because the, uh, the small 2% that owned slaves that were black wanted to take care of their property. But white slaves were even worse than that. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I understand this issue is powerful because... For example, our Declaration of Independence, principles this country is built on. Second sentence, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are, in, are created equal and endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. Among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Those rights only attach to men and women made in God's image. They don't attach to animals. Third sentence of the Declaration says that to secure these rights... Governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the government. When they say that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, they're telling us that in the vision of the founding fathers, the principal reason for government was to secure to every man, woman, and even unborn child those God-given unalienable rights which attach at the moment of your creation, not your birth. Under the Declaration of Independence principles, if you're recognized to be a man, a woman, or even an unborn child made in God's image, they can't abort you. You become the master. If you are endowed by God, that's the foundation for sovereignty. That's, why they, like the changed, right that's why they changed the definition to fetus.
Uh, that's why Frank Herbert's book, uh -huh. It's Globalist Philosophy, is that the secret cult group then puts you through a ritual to decide if you're a human. They see everyone else as animals. That's what Albert Pike wrote, that most people are animals, steak on the table to be eaten. This is really Illuminati philosophy. Absolutely. And this is, this is important, powerful stuff. Again, if this goes out and people understand it, the reason they drop this is it's political dynamite. The police state is built in large measure on the drug laws. The drug laws are built on the presumption that the people are animals. They can't stand in front of a jury and tell them we think you're all a bunch of animals. They can't tell them that. If you can draft a religious freedom defense against these people, they have to back off.